Hey, good morning, number two. So this video is about problem two on worksheet two. So here, this problem concerns the Cartesian graph of the range of a parametric function. And that parametric function is going to map three, uh, the real line into three space. And here's the equation. L of t, it's a line, so it only has one variable, t, parametric variable. So here we go. So this equation takes the real number line and places it somewhere in three-dimensional space. You can tell it's a line because it's linear. And you can tell where it lies because it has three coordinate or Cartesian variables. So probably the easiest way to <clears throat> graph a function, a linear function like this, is to plot a couple points. Just two points will determine it. Or we could figure out a point on in the direction, either one. But let's, since I've done, since I've done the other way, let's do the two points. Just two points, and this is the line between them. So we're going to take a t, and then the point on will be over here. L of t, since we're graphing the range, t is 0, gives you minus 1, 3, 4. t is 1, will give you 2, uh, 5, 3. So graphing the point minus 1, 3, 4, minus 1 in the x1, and 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this point right here is on. 2, 5, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3, 1, 2, 3. So this point here is on. So the line we're looking at is the range of the function. It's that line right there. All right. Make a list of three or four points on the graph. Uh, well, this was good. We started out well. So maybe we plug in t equal 2 to get another one. 6 minus 1 is 5. 4 and 3 is 7. 4 minus 2 is 2. And plugging in 3, we get 8. 6 and 3 is 9. 4 minus 3 is 1. So there is a list of four points on them. Two other parametric equations, and by that I mean different ones, with the exact same range. So maybe we'll keep these points up here uh, in a while, because any pair of these points will determine the parametric equation. But we could do this a little differently also. We could write L of t in the point direction form, and that will give the direction. So separating this, if you separate out the constants, you get minus 1, 3, and 4, plus t times. And now this will be the direction, 3, 2, minus 1. So this parametric uh, equation in this form tells you what you need. It tells you the point on. And it tells you the direction. So to get another parametric equation for the exact same line, you want to use maybe different points that are on. And you can use different directions, but they have to be parallel to this. So that means multiples of them. And so let's, we got plenty of information here, so let's do it. So the next one, L1 of t, we make a selection of one of these. How about this? 2, 5, 3, plus t times 
And now we'll pick a different but parallel direction. So I could double this, 6, 4, minus 1. Or I could have done minus 3, minus 2, 1. Or 30, 20, minus 10. Lots of different choices. But not arbitrary choices. They're different because they're different vectors. Direction is a vector, different vectors. But they're parallel directions, and they give you the same line. So this will be important to us because uh, we, will, we will want to recognize that the same shape can have different equations. All right. So I think this is the first two parts, or three parts. Now we want to find a symmetric Cartesian equation for the same thing. So I think I'll erase everything but the equation for L. Unlike class, you can always stop the video so that uh, you can see what's up there before I erase. One of the few advantages of having a video rather than actually doing it in person. So in person is better. You bet! Uh, snow! In person is much better. I like it better. There are more people. We can see them. We can talk to them. We can give them a pencil if they forgot. Well, I, I know, Snow, but we're stuck with what we got. And you and I are here. I know. I know. Okay, Snow, you, you wait here. All right. So let uh, I forget what we're doing. Snow. Um. Oh yeah, the symmetric equation. So let's take a look. So these coordinates are your x1, x2, x3 coordinates. So what this parametric equation is telling you is that x1 is 3t minus 1 and x2 is 2t plus 3 and x3 is 4 minus t. And these equations are a system. So this is the same t in each one. And plugging in the same t gives you three different values for the x's. And we take advantage of that to find the, the so-called symmetric Cartesian equation. Hang on for a second. <clears throat> that was my brother. So. Uh, the first one is x1 plus 1 is 3t. The second one tells you that x2 minus 3 is 2t. And the third one tells you that x3 minus 4 is minus t. And now we can solve each of these for t. So t is equal to, from the first one, x1 plus 1 divided by 3, but t is equal to, from the second one, x2 minus 3 over 2, solving this equation for t. And it's the same t. And that's equal to x3 minus 4 over minus 1. So here is a Cartesian equation, no t in this. Here is a Cartesian equation using only x1, x2, x3. And it's actually not an equation, but it's actually two equations. This equals this, and this equals this. Or all three of them are equal. So this symmetric form is not a single equation. It is uh, two equations that are equal to each other. And, and this is it. And this gives you what's known as a point on. In this case, the point on is the same, minus 1, 3, 4. And it gives you these direction numbers, which can be used also to graph uh, the, uh, to find the direction of the line directly. So 3, 2, minus 1 uh, is the direction of the line if you write this in the point direction line. So this is it for. The third part. Uh-huh. Now you want the equations of two planes 
which intersect in this line. So I'm going to erase this. So if we find a single plane that contains this line, then any other plane will be a second plane that contains the line, and their intersection will be the line. So if we find one plane, the only way we can screw up with a second one is pick a second representation for the exact same plane. So the real problem here is basically to find one plane that contains that single line. This was given in parametric form, so I'm going to look at my plane parametrically. So P of T and S is equal to, and now to do this, I need a direction one. Let's do this. I need a point on. I need direction one. And I need direction two. Let me just simplify. Dir one and dir two. A point on and two directions. Now, I want this plane to contain the line. And we already have a bunch of points on. So I'm going to make sure that it at least, it, it's going to have to contain every point of the line. So. Uh, to find a point on the plane, I'm going to use any of the points of the line. And I think minus 1, 3, 4 is a point on the line that we found before by taking t equals 0. And we want the plane to contain the direction of the line. We want the plane to contain the whole line. So I not only want it to go through that one point, I want it to contain that direction, the direction of the line should be a direction of the plane. Now the plane has lots of different directions, but one of those directions better be the direction of the line or it won't contain the line. So that is kind of the key thing to see when you were thinking about it. And if you saw that, this is kind of the main idea of this problem. Does anybody know what this is anymore? This is an old light bulb incandescent white bulb. Part of my repertoire, I'm going to have to change. Anyway, your one is, the direction here is 3, 2, minus 1. And just to emphasize that this is interpreted as a vector. And D2, can, dir2 can be anything that you want except something parallel to this. You know, you don't want it to be linearly dependent on this, or you won't get a plane. So we could take 1, 1, 1. Or we could take 50, 13, pi. Or sort of anything. So, uh, but let's get our first plane by taking this point, this direction, and this direction. So P1 of T and S is a point on minus one, three, four, plus t times dir one, three, two minus one, plus s times dir two, one, one, one. And for P2, second plane, One, three, four, plus t times three, two minus one, plus s times, uh, I could use this, but let's make it a little cleaner. Two, three, 17. Okay, a little wild, but not too much. So here are two planes. Each of one, each of them obviously contains this line. Why? If you take s equal to zero, if you zero out the s part, you get the equation for that line in both cases. So each of these planes contain that equation. And they are different. They, uh, 
because the second direction here is linear, these, these directions are linearly independent of each other. So, so here we go. So thanks a lot. And uh, you'll get another video for me about some stuff about curves in a little while. See you soon.